Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about how to get the foundation postdoc. And as I have discussed in a video sometime before, you can essentially classify postdoc positions into two classes. That is the postdoc job and the foundation postdoc. The postdoc job is one which is advertised in various places. This is in response to a PI getting a large grant and then looking for postdocs to do the work. So here the job requirement is pretty well defined. The candidate and the skills they are looking for are defined in the ad which is given out. Now when we talk of the foundation postdoc, these are essentially postdocs given by bodies such as the Humboldt Foundation, Fulbright Foundation, JSPS, Banting, Swiss National Foundation and so on. And essentially in all these cases you have to write a research proposal, find a host university and a host professor and then you have to apply for this postdoctoral position. So let's look at some of the things which can help you to get the foundation postdoc. Now the number one thing is that foundation postdocs are very prestigious and I mentioned many times before that as far as the academic system is concerned this is obsessed with prestige and so what happens is that once you get a very known and well named postdoc it will always be there on your resume or your curriculum vitae and it is always going to help you throughout your life. So. The prestige of any of these postdocs I mentioned before such as Humboldt, Fulbright, Banting is very high and it will help you in getting a university position as an assistant professor. It will help you get various jobs in government labs. It's going to help you in getting jobs in think tanks and so on. So essentially any system which is based on ranks, for example the government, university and so on, they are always interested in seeing a named postdoc on your CV. So that's why so many people apply for these foundation postdocs. So let's look at the requirements which will help you get the foundation postdoc. So the number one is that you should have a stellar CV and essentially this CV should have five or more journal publications. The publications should be in the top journals in your field and these journals should be preferably web of science indexed journals or society journals. So essentially like I have mentioned before Scopus is somewhat unstable. The journals get some time delisted from Scopus so keep that in mind go for web of science journals and very well known journals in your field. So if you are in fluid mechanics you can go for journal of fluid mechanics. If you are in information theory you can go for the IEEE transactions in information theory. If you are in scientific computing, you can think about the CIM Journal of Scientific Computing and so on. So you get my point here. Whatever your field, you really know what is the top journal in your field or what are the top five journals in your field and target these journals. So it's not so much important to have more than five journal papers, even three journal papers may be enough if they are in some of the top journals of your field. So always remember that numbers is a subjective statement. Nobody is going to tell you that there is some kind of cutoff as far as numbers are concerned in any of the foundation postdoc. So quality will always trump quantity. Now the second thing is that you should have a good GPA. Sometimes they may ask for your transcript. You may also benefit if you have any prizes or awards you have obtained during your academic tenure. So essentially if you have got any best paper awards, if you have got any best thesis award or some gold medal in your degree, you have distinction, you have honors, you are the department topper, all these of course help in any academic setting and so in this kind of foundation postdoc they are always looking for any sign of exceptionality. So that's something to keep in mind if you are able to show demonstrated signs of exceptionality it will certainly help your case. Now the next point is that you need to write a good research proposal and here it's very important to follow the guidelines of the proposal very carefully and also make sure that the proposal you are writing is something which the foundation is seeking. 
and essentially they will list out certain fields in some cases they are interested in often these are fields of global importance maybe climate change maybe water resources maybe infectious diseases maybe using information technology in delivery of medication maybe drug delivery and so on so whatever be the field which has a lot of impact that's going to have a big impact on the foundation proposal selection committee because remember this is a different from a job type of postdoc where there is a very clearly laid out job description here they are looking for ideas from the candidates and the candidates who come up with concepts which have a big impact on the world will be the ones who get funded now the third case is you need to find a host and again finding a research host is actually one of the most difficult parts of the foundation proposal because what happens is that many a time the research hosts are very busy in their own work in their own lab and they may not be amenable to replying to emails from a large number of candidates throughout the world so you need to find ways to network you need to have a couple of papers under your belt you need to cite people in your papers and so on so that people when they receive your email will feel like replying to you and it's always a good idea to have a paper or two which you can attach to this email so then they can feel that okay you are a legitimate candidate you have shown something positive in your previous work and maybe you can be useful to this lab also you can always mention that you will bring your own funds but even this is not very tempting to many people because remember you may bring your own funds but this person has to provide space for you provide time for you and so on so he or she will expect that you contribute to the lab that you publish a few papers when you are there that is of course the currency as far as academia is concerned now the fourth problem is the importance of the problem so i touched upon this in the research proposal but there is one more aspect of the importance of the problem the problem must be important for your home country for you as a candidate and for the country where the proposal is being solicited from so essentially if you are applying to germany for example for many of the proposals which are open to foreign candidates you should pick topics which are of interest both to germany and your home country so again fields which are always very good are things related to supply chain things related to solar power climate change and so on anything which mitigates effects of drought or floods infectious diseases malnutrition and you need to somehow figure out how to connect your research field to some of these problems so this is sometime a difficult problem and it is a mental exercise and that's what the foundation wants you to do it wants you to figure out how you can use your somewhat esoteric technical skills in addressing problems of social importance so that's something you need to keep in mind now the number 5 point is references and of course the references are going to be very important these need to be from experts in the field so these may be people who know about your research who know of your research who know you or who know of you and one of the things the references should clearly mention is the exceptionality of the candidate because again whenever you are applying to a foundation postdoc they are looking for exceptional candidates so wherever you have good backgrounds you have published papers in top journals you have got best paper awards you have got best thesis awards all these things can be reiterated by the reference in their letters and so if they do that then it will certainly come out very well so you can give some background to your references about your background in a paragraph or so and tell them the main points about your career so far and so if they are able to highlight some of these aspects that's going to come across very well finally the number 6 point is that most of the foundation postdocs are very much interested in the diversity of the candidate pool and also the diversity of the candidates they give so in many disciplines what happens is that women and certain minorities are not represented very well so in case you are a female candidate or you are in one of these minority countries which is 
not getting too much representation in that postdoc, your chances of actually getting that postdoc become more. So in case you are a female candidate in a science and technology field, suddenly your chances of getting one of these foundation postdocs in a Western country, such as in US, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand is much higher. So you should apply to these postdocs in case you are somewhat worried about not having enough papers or not having a stellar resume, I would say you can put that on the side because it may happen that you may get through because they are certainly trying to encourage the diversity of the candidates. So that's something you can take advantage of. So these were some points I had for you today about how to successfully get a foundation postdoc. So of course I mentioned the fact that a lot of exceptionality is needed here but do remember that it's not just your CV it also depends on the problem you select it depends on the country you apply from it depends on the value you bring to the table as far as the foundation is concerned so again it's not something which can be concluded in a very clear manner so it's always a good idea to apply for any of these postdoctoral positions because remember there is no application fee the entire process is done on the web pages and through pdf files so there is essentially no cost to you except for some time and certainly you can make enough time during the weekends or during evenings to apply for any of these postdoctoral positions so i would certainly encourage any phd candidate to apply for foundation postdocs if you don't get it, there are always postdoc jobs out there. And for that, you can see some of my different videos on this channel. So I hope this video is useful to you. And I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.